The topic of this video is solving radical equations. Let's look at a problem. Solve. 5 plus the principal square root of the difference 3x minus 11 equals x. Okay, once again we notice this is an equation. We can see that because of the equal sign. And it's a radical equation because at least one of its terms contains a radical. So the four steps are isolate, raise, solve, check. Let's begin. All right, so first, isolate. That means that the term that contains a radical, which is this term right here, we need to get it alone. Alone means there's no adding or subtracting before or after it. Well, we can see that we've got this 5 adding to the radical. And the only way we can get rid of that is with subtraction. So we're going to subtract 5 on both sides. Then we will have the principal square root of the difference 3x minus 11 equals x minus 5. This radical is now isolated. Step 2. Raise both sides to a power that matches the index of the isolated radical. Well, this is a square root. Even though we don't write it, there's a hidden 2 right here. And we know that because this is consistent with the language of algebra. If I asked you to pronounce this, you would say that this is x squared. So square and 2 are numbers that are associated with each other. This is a square root. The index is 2. So our job is very simple. Raise both sides of this equation to the second power. So an entire left side gets raised to the second power. The entire right side get, gets raised to the second power. On the left, the square and the square root cancel, leaving us 3x subtract 11. On the right, we have to remember that an exponent tells us how many times to multiply a base by itself. And when your base contains addition or subtraction, it is very likely that that means that you're going to have to use FOIL to do this multiplication. So x times x is x squared. x times subtract 5 is minus 5x. Subtract 5 times x is minus 5x. And subtract 5 times subtract 5 makes plus 25. Putting these like terms together, we get x squared minus 10x plus 25. Now the right, side of, the right side of our equation is done, but the left side has remained the same for the last two lines of algebra. We still have 3x minus 11. All right, this is a quadratic equation. Uh, you learned several methods in your previous math class for how to solve quadratic equations, but almost all of them uh, re revolve on a technique of getting one side to be zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to subtract 3x on the left and on the right. We're going to add 11 on the left and on the right. Notice how I'm writing these so that my like terms are together. This gives me 0 equals x squared minus 13x plus 36. All right, so now I can factor. I can use the quadratic formula. I can complete the square. I have many, many methods for uh, solving this equation. I'm going to choose factoring here, and the reason why is because it's so easy. The coefficient of the variable squared term is 1. So to factor this, I just have to come up with two numbers that multiply to make 36, but add to make negative 13. Those numbers would be negative 4 and negative 9. So this can now be written as 0 equals x subtract 4 times x subtract 9. You can always check to see if you factored correctly by using multiplication, in this case FOIL. x squared minus 9x minus 14 minus 4x makes the minus 13x plus 36. Now by the zero product property, x minus 4 equals 0 or x minus 9 equals 0. And we have two possible answers, x equals 4 or x equals 9. But remember, when you're working with radical equations, step two, raising both sides, introduces the possibility of extraneous solutions, which means either one of those answers could be extraneous. So we have to check both of them. All right, so let's go back to our original problem. Our two possible solutions are 4 and 9. First, we'll check 4. Everywhere we see an x, we'll put 4. And I will color code that to make that very easy to see. Then, without using properties of equality, we will determine what is the value on the left side, what is the value on the right side, and we will compare. 
So we will not subtract five on both sides. Instead, we will simply follow order of operations and determine what number is on the left side of this equation. Three times four is 12. 12 minus 11 is one. The square root of one is one, and five plus one is six. So the left side of this equation is six. The right side is four. Do those match? No. Therefore, x equals four is an extraneous solution. It cannot be a solution of this equation because it does not make the left side match the right side. All right, well, that didn't work, so let's try nine. Check x equals nine. Five plus the principal square root of three times nine minus 11 equals nine. Everywhere you see an x, put a nine and simplify just as before. All right, so three times nine is 27. 27 minus 11 is 16. The square root of 16 is four, and five plus four is nine. So we have nine on the left, nine on the right. Those match, and therefore this solution checks out. We've now made it through all four steps. Isolate, raise, solve, check, and we found the only solution x equals 9.